Happy Halloween, everyone. So since you've come knocking on my door, I'm going to give you a small treat. This is a completely free to download Unity project that I created for you. I'll put the link in the description. It'll be available at itch.io. If you wish, you can leave a tip, but I set it to zero by default. So it is free to download. You can use this for any commercial or non-commercial project. So if you want to turn this into a video game and sell it, you absolutely can. No royalties to us, no attributes to us. So you don't have to let anyone know that you use our assets. The only limitation is that you can't download this project and then just re-upload it and resell it, okay? You need to make a substantial change to it, and that's typical. That's typical the way that even free-to-use projects are, that you can't just resell and redistribute the source project. You need to make it part of a larger work. Okay, so rather than me trying to explain what this project is, let's just take a look at it. So let's run it. So as you can see, you have a title screen. This is just a text object, so you can change it to be whatever you want. You can add some visuals, and the Start button, of course, works with a left mouse click. So this is a first-person perspective point defense game. So it's, again, first-person perspective. You have a primary weapon that fires. As you can see, it casts light on the surface beneath it. And you only move left and right. You don't move forward and back. So it's really a point defense game. In the upper right corner, you should see score and HP. So every time you beat one of the attackers, your score goes up. Every time one of the attacker gets past you, your score goes down like that. There are currently only two types of enemies. And what's going on is there's a randomized statement that is determining which one shows up. So the other one is meant to be a rare spawn. And after every 15 spawns, and that number can be changed if you choose to, the interval between spawn decreases. In other words, the enemies spawn ever so slightly, and there's the ghost. So ever so slightly, they spawn faster and faster and faster. So there's a built-in progression. There's a built-in difficulty. The only real difference between the ghosts and the robe guys are um, basically the ghosts move faster. That's it. There's really no other difference. So they move faster. They don't take any more damage. They don't do any additional damage, but they do move quick. And that's one of the reasons why they're rare. So I think that's it for the basic explanation of what's going on. So it's just kind of like an endless shooter that eventually enough robes will get past you and your HP will zero will be zero and that will go to the end of the game. We have a super attack, which I'll now demonstrate. It's the S key, sends out a wave that freezes the enemies on the screen. As you can see, they're in a translucent block and we have a particle system that's making it look like cold air is coming off of them. They can be defeated with a normal shot. Currently, they do not thaw out. So you could change that if you wish, that maybe there's a timer. I just didn't bother with this. This was actually, I have to admit, kind of a last minute thought. I did want to give you guys something for the holiday. So I basically have been working on this just for the last two days, and that's in addition to my full-time job. So yeah, you can actually bang out a fully functional game, such that it is, within just a couple of days. Now, the reason why that guy in the distance isn't moving, it's because he's frozen, but due to collision detection, I hit the block, but it didn't hit him. So you know, there's little things that you always have to tweak as far as collision detection, and that's part of, you know, really any kind of game. You know, how forgiving or, or not is the collision detection. And you can see that these guys are clearly spawning with less interval now, just as I mentioned. And I think that's about it. The main weapon is on a timer, so even if you, if you spam that button, it still only shoots at a certain rate. And there's the game over screen. If you click on try again, which we will, it gets you back into the game. Score is set to zero. HP is set to 300. And there you go. As I said, a free project that you can use for whatever you want. Any commercial or non-commercial, you just can't redistribute the project as it is. It has to be part of a larger project. So whether it's an executable or whatever. So let's take a quick look at how this works, or if you don't want the explanation, you can just head on over to itch.io if you're interested. Again, the link should be in the description. It's controlled primarily by three scripts. Yes, there is a fourth script table, as you can see. 
All it does is it looks to see if the mouse has been clicked on an object. So this is script is attached to the start button on the title screen and it's attached to the try again button on the game over screen. So primarily it's three scripts controlling everything. The game flow script does exactly as you think it would. It controls the overall game flow. So as you can see, this are these are the variables for the total score and the total HP. These are then the text objects that display those because it's one thing to have a variable, it's another thing to actually display it. So you have a variable to store it and then a text object to display it. In the start section, we say run the spawn robes coroutine, which is this. And this is really the main gameplay loop. As you can see at the end here, it goes back to the beginning. That when you finish the uh, spawn robes routine, the last thing it says is come back here and run it again. So let's take a look at quickly how this works. As you can see, it's saying wait a certain amount of time. That time is a variable because, as I said, that variable gets decreased as you play, which means that the wait time between spawns decreases. So with every spawn, this variable is increased by one. We randomize the X position. If spawn exceeds 15, reset spawn back to zero, just the variable and then decrease spawn rate by 0.1F. So as I said, that is that. So this is what controls that difficulty setting, that every time your 16th enemy has spawned, and you can change this, you can change this number to whatever you want, the decrease is by 1 tenth of a second. So this has now gotten shorter, so it will spawn faster. This is a failsafe that if spawn rate goes below 0.6, it gets set back at 0.6. So this will never decrease below 0.6. But as it's made now, 0.6 is probably unplayable. You probably can't beat it. This variable randomizes which enemy is, gonna is going to be displayed. So basically what this does, it says choose a number between 0 and 29 because the last digit is not selected. So this number is inclusive. This one is not. So 0 to 29, and that's random. As, as, excuse me, that's arbitrary. My apologies. I arbitrarily chose 30. You can make it 20, 10, whatever you want. If this variable is greater than 27, so you have 0 to 29, so if it comes in at 28 or 29, instantiate the ghost, else instantiate the cultist, the robe dude, and then run the whole thing again. So that's the main spawning of the enemies. A lot of this is just kind of plumbing, so to speak, you know, setting up the transform for the object so it can be spawned, creating the vector three that the uh, enemy will spawn at, capturing the camera position, that kind of thing. Now, this script is called Velcon because it was meant to be short for velocity control. However, it is doing two things. It is indeed controlling velocity. So in the start section, it looks to see the tag of the object that the script is attached to. So the script is attached to multiple objects. Okay. This script looks at that tag and says, if the tag is this, then do that. So if the tag is fireball, which is your weapon, that you your primary weapon, then this is the velocity. It's moving 12 on the z-axis. If it's robe, that's the velocity. You would expect it to be the opposite direction because it's approaching you, whereas the fireball is traveling away from you, so on and so forth. And then the second part, so the first part is velocity, the second part are all the triggers. So this is attached to anything that a collision has to be detected for. So I'm not gonna go through all these, but like if the script is attached to the robe object and the robe object collides with the fireball object, then score is increased and the robe object is destroyed. Likewise, unless you want the fireball to be piercing, you want the fireball to get destroyed. So you see the opposite down here. This script is checking to see if it's attached to the fireball, which it is. And if the other object that's been collided is the robe, then destroy that. So these two will happen in the same frame that the robe is detecting a collision with the fireball, and the fireball is, detect is detecting a collision with a robe. And it's just rinse and repeat for the one uh, detecting collision with the ghost. 
This instantiates the freeze wave. So there's actually an ice block object that you're not seeing. The particle system isn't actually handling the detection. There is actually a blank particle, uh, excuse me, there's, there's an invisible object that's actually looking for the collision. Okay, so I think that's just about it for the CamCon. It controls the camera, and since it's a first-person perspective game, there is no actual uh, 3D representation of the, uh, of the player. You're just seeing from the camera. So this moves the camera based on the, um, this moves the camera based on which key is entered. So typical WASD controls and nothing really special there. This looks at the X position of the, or the X coordinate of the camera. If it's below 15, set the velocity to zero and reset the position to, uh, excuse me, negative 15. And the reason for that is we don't want you to go off the, the play area. This constrains the play area. So if the X position is less than 15, again, stop the velocity and set it back at 15. If it's greater than 15, again, stop the velocity, set it back at 15. We don't want people going out of bounds. Let's see. And this actually instantiates the free, freeze wave. I think I'm, I might've misspoke here. Um, oh, I see what this is. The, I know what this is. This instantiates the ice block itself. So my apologies, I misspoke. This instantiates the block that the robe is standing in, whereas this instantiates the uh, the freeze object itself. So in other words, you saw that wave go out. So my apologies for misspeaking earlier. I, as I mentioned, I just started working on this project a couple of days ago. So really went at it at a breakneck pace. Anyways, so I think that's about it. I hope that this has been helpful and informative. And again, if you want the project, head on over to itch.io. It's at zero cost. And I do plan on doing a few updates to it because like I said, this was kind of last minute. And so the updates will also be free, of course. And um, if there's some features you'd like to see, just add a comment to this video. And I certainly would be willing to consider that. And uh, that should about do it. So I uh, hope that this has been helpful. I hope you enjoy the project. And uh, please have a happy Halloween.